Hey everyone, Unreal Engine 5.4 is here. Check out some of the highlights. First up, UE 5.4 has powerful new tools for setting up and animating characters directly in the editor. With modular control rig, you can build animation rigs from understandable parts instead of complex granular graphs. Here you can see us setting up a leg in just a few steps. Automatic retargeting makes it faster and easier to get great results when using bipedal character animation of known skeletal types. The skeleton editor is now more performant and offers more functionality. There's also a suite of new functions that make the deformer graph more accessible. For animation authoring, we focused on making our tools more intuitive and robust while streamlining workflows. Case in point, Animation-friendly gizmos means you can quickly and easily pose characters using just the middle mouse button. And finally, Sequencer gets a significant makeover with better readability and improved usability, including a new layered control rigs feature. Motion matching is now more robust, performant, and memory scalable. Now production ready, this toolkit is used to select and transition animation clips at runtime by searching a database of captured animation, using the current motion information of the character in the game as the key. There's also a suite of debugging tools that gives visibility into its inner workings. We've invested significant effort into improving rendering performance in UE 5.4. This includes refactoring the systems to enable a greater degree of parallelization, adding GPU instance culling to hardware ray tracing, optimizing shader compilation, and more. Nanite continues to receive enhancements, starting with a new tessellation feature that enables fine details, such as cracks and bumps, to be added at render time without altering the original mesh. Plus, the addition of software variable rate shading via Nanite Compute Materials brings substantial performance gains. Temporal Super Resolution has received stability and performance enhancements to ensure predictable output regardless of the target platform. And finally, Movie Render Graph, a major update to the Movie Render queue, enables you to set up render layers with a node-based architecture. Next up, UE 5.4 introduces a new motion design mode that's been developed in conjunction with leading broadcasters. It's equipped with specialized tools for authoring complex 2D motion graphics, including 3D shapes, cloners, effectors, modifiers, animators, and more. In this release, the virtual camera tool is now supported on Android as well as iOS. VCAM workflows are also now fully supported in Unreal Engine on Mac OS. On the VR scouting front, we've introduced a new, fully customizable toolkit that utilizes XR Creative Framework to support open XR HMDs such as Oculus and Valve Index. For IC VFX, we've added depth of field compensation for in-display. Using the real world's camera position and lens parameters, it renders a corrected depth of field and Unreal Engine on the LED wall to compensate for the additional blurring introduced by the physical lens. Along with other depth of field enhancements, this dramatically improves the realism and plausibility of LED wall shots. New in this release is Unreal Cloud DDC, a self-hosted cloud storage system for the Unreal Engine-derived data cache. Designed for distributed users and teams, it enables you to efficiently share Unreal Engine cached data across public network connections. Our local DDC also now uses a new server architecture, offering improved data conditioning performance, faster load times and Pi workflows, and other benefits. These are just some of the highlights of the Unreal Engine 5.4. You can find out more about all the new features and download the release on unrealengine.com. Enjoy.